Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It is 1 p.m. I'd like to officially call this mem this uh, meeting to order. Uh, we are right now missing two councillors, <clears throat> one of them, Councillor Nishikawa, and Councillor Jagowitz has just joined us, so he is now part of the meeting. Um, Councillor Bridgman and Councillor Mazan, I know, are here. They've had their cameras on, so they will be certainly part of this meeting. There we go. Welcome both of them back. Uh, as I mentioned, Councillor Nishikawa was supposed to be joining us a little later this morning, but uh, we've yet to see her, so hopefully she can join us. Um, senior management, obviously, and everybody here. Uh, we do today want to acknowledge that we're on lands traditionally occupied by Indigenous peoples, and as Indigenous peoples who have cared for this territory for the benefit of future generations. Their stewardship throughout the ages is recognized. Uh, we did have uh, public comment, um, but nobody commented to our traditional. Uh, also today, if anybody is going to participate publicly, uh, we are, they need to recognize that uh, they're consenting to their image and voice and comments being recorded and posted online as all of our meetings are virtual these days. We do have a supplementary agenda, and there is also a potential resolution that will be coming out of that uh, supplementary. So I have a resolution. I'm going to just see um, where we go. We do need two thirds on this, but it's a resolution moved by Councillor Brisman, seconded by Councillor Mazan, whereas Section 3513 of Township Council Procedural Bylaw 2019-79 provides that new motions placed on a supplementary agenda shall be shall not be considered or voted upon until the next subsequent meeting, except with the consent of two thirds vote. Now, therefore be it resolved that council hereby consents to the consideration and vote and a new motion with respect to the Transport Canada's Let's Talk web portal. I'll ask the question, all those in favor? Madam Clerk, I believe we have more than two thirds because that is unanimous. Thank you very much, that motion is carried. We'll get to that item shortly um, <clears throat> in our agenda. I will ask right now if there's any declaration of pecuniary interest. Not seeing any. We do have uh, one o'clock, uh, Mr. Fauner going to join us, but we're gonna try and uh, move on. A couple of uh, items, first of all, and let's just move to our consent agenda, get that out of the way. Moved by Councillor Bridgman, seconded by Councillor Zavitz. Be resolved that the mayor and council adopt and enact the following minutes and recommendations contained in the March 16th, 2022 consent agenda and direct staff to proceed with all necessary administrative actions. And that's number one, March 16th, 2022 General Finance Committee meeting minutes and action items one, two, four, six to nine. Also March 16th general or council meeting, March 17th planning committee meeting minutes, action items one to 11. March 18th, Special Planning Committee meeting minutes and action item two, and March 22nd, Special Planning Committee meeting minutes and action items one. Councillor Zavitz has a question. Uh, thank you for the indulgence. Uh, as it relates to um, the council minutes uh, uh, relating to the Black Lake uh, Lateo file, which we're revisiting tomorrow at uh, planning, uh, might I ask that, that uh, searing question, this went all the way to council. Now it's been pushed back to planning. Does does this mean after tomorrow, it seems to me that it would then have to go back to, to council, no matter what the decision is tomorrow, a, a month later? That would be correct. Okay. Is that something that we normally, I'm, I'm not aware that we normally do that. Is there a reason why we just, just didn't stay at council for another month or if we're, it has to be put back is my question. So uh, to answer appropriately, the place for sort of heavy lifting and discussion would be that at a committee meeting level versus around the council table level. Um, it could have remained, um, but uh, the hope uh, of that decision back at council was that we could do some heavy lifting and do a little bit more uh, working with uh, the property owner, if you will, to find a resolution once the committee is satisfied with that uh, working relationship, then it would come back to council. So Good, thank you. Comments? You've all heard the resolution. I'll call the question. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to knock off the uh, consent agenda quickly. And uh, Councillor Bridgman or Mazan, did you want to talk a little bit about the uh, supplemental agenda? And that's the uh, Transport Canada uh, Let's Talk web portal. Who's up? Councillor Bridgman, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Harding. Um, yes, and uh, we have. Oh, Barb, we lost your audio for some reason, even though you're showing unmuted. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Sorry, I wasn't plugged in far enough, I think. Anyway, um, so we did pass uh, a motion to support this coalition. I, I know I certainly have lots of, uh, received lots of complaints about the, the, the new, new boats <clears throat> that are on the lake that are way above uh, the noise level that is compatible with enjoyment on your dock. So um, this is to support our, our uh, Safe Quiet Lakes Decibel Coalition by posting a letter on the Transport <clears throat> Canada website that we support what they are doing. And the reason it's coming so quickly, and I know it's unusual, and I know it doesn't happen often, but they've only given a two month window Transport Canada and so by the time this went through the normal channels, uh, it would be long past uh, when they've taken the website down before uh, we could post this. So that is what we're doing. The letter is attached um, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It, uh, it simply supports what we have already passed a motion on. I, I think that, that's it, Mayor it Harding. Uh, Councillor Mazan may want to add something. Councillor Mazan, did you want to add anything? Uh, thank you. Um, simply that uh, a lot of the language that is in this letter actually is pulled directly from the resolution I think we passed back in March uh, last year. So uh, it's not that this is new information, with the exception of options were presented on Transport Canada's website that, um, and say Quiet Lakes and the Decibel Coalition is recommending option number five. Option number five is uh, asking uh, putting the obligation onto both the manufacturer as well as the owners of the boats. So um, that is the preferred choice. And that is the one part of this letter that is different than what we've talked about in the past. Just as a quick reminder too, that um, many of the, um, I know there's lots, there's the potential for concern about the impact of this on some of the other residents and boat owners on the lake. Uh, just a quick reminder that any boats that are pre-1960 are actually excluded from any of these um, uh, considerations. So uh, a lot of the old wooden boats that we might see on the lake would be excluded. And uh, certainly not that I'm an expert, but I'm told through some of my channels that any of the new wooden boats that are being created, actually, it would be very difficult for them to be hitting that 75 decibel uh, amount, which is the pass-through amount um, for them to hit that mark. So I uh, just wanted to make sure if there's anybody that's watching that might have some of these older, older wooden boats that uh, this wouldn't directly impact you in any way. The intention is really to try and get a handle on some of these new more modern boats that are out on our lakes. We all have heard from them, those that are passing through on Sunday mornings and are well above that uh, 75 decibel pass-through uh, rate. So trying to get some teeth and trying to quite frankly support the good efforts here of our friends at Safe Quiet Lakes and the Decibel Coalition. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, welcome also to Councillor Nishikawa. Councillor Kelly, you have a question. Uh, thank you and through you. I, I actually have uh, a couple of questions, but it's just to clarify, I actually support the concept. Um, I'm not sure what is different here from what exists, because what exists, as I understand it, is the small bit of vessel regulations, federal legislation has been around since 99, that prevents boats from operating within five, I think it's five miles, five kilometers I wrote down, but five miles of shore without a noise abatement advice on it, so, or device on it. So I'm not sure you know, how this changes that. I'll dump my questions out and then we, we can figure out if they're real concerns or real issues or not. Number two, this speaks to boat motors. And I assume by somewhere it defines boat as including a personal watercraft uh, as opposed to uh, a boat. 
Um, number three, I, 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 we weren't, it wasn't shared with us what the five options were. I know we're moving towards option number five, but is it interesting to know what options one through four were? Are we giving anything up? And my last issue is sound from um, stereo systems can often be the most obnoxious part of a boat. Does this include any sound emanating from a boat or is it just the, the, the motor sound? Yeah, I'll go to Councillor Bridgman. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kelly. I'm not sure I can answer all of those specifically, uh, but I will say that it's about enforcement now because uh, it's not being enforced, which you talked about. So this is a push by this coalition to get the Transport Canada, which actually is responsible for, for the water, to, uh, to put this forward, and then it will be enforced by the OPP, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's question number one. Number two, it does not, it's not stereo systems. This is strictly engines. So it won't be that. And now I'm losing some of your other questions. Sorry. <laughs> Personal watercraft was the other one, which I believe would oh. be encapsulated within this legislation. Council it Bill. would. Yeah. It, it is. Yeah. It's yeah. a motor, okay. it's a motorboat. So. Yes. Any other comments? All right. Council, probably my understanding also in this, just to uh, chime in. Uh, they talk about a, uh, a muffler uh, or a sound muffling device. Uh, the decibel level of 75, however, and the performance standard that goes around how much it needs to muffle is, I believe, what is missing from current okay. legislation. Um, technically, you could put a, if you had straight pipes out of the back of your boat, you could put a handkerchief over top of that, and that is considered muffler. So okay. that they're really going down is to put a benchmark standard in the performance method. Um, and and just, for my, just for one last supplemental, this would regulate how they're built and delivered to the dealer, but presumably also that they're not altered or tampered by the owner once they get it and decide to weld in an exhaust cutout somewhere in the, in the process, I assume. Uh, so I think, again, the decibel level would allow for that. Um, in this resolution. And I'll also comment the same legislation would occur right now for the snowmobile industry, okay. uh, that you cannot modify a manufacturer's exhaust on a okay. snowmobile. You can be ticketed. There are people out there who have modified, but it gives the police an opportunity to ticket those people who are contravening the law. Yeah. Councilor Plan, you want to add something? Uh, thank you, and through you. And if I, if I was hearing Councilor Kelly's question correctly, I think that was the, um, the attraction to option number five, which is that it puts the onus both on a manufacturer for future boats, but also uh, on the owners today. And you know there are available off-market modification tools mm -hmm. already available for any, and, that, and I'm understanding that they're quite affordable. So uh, it puts the onus on both parties. So hopefully that clarifies. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to read this resolution moved by Council Bridgman, second by Council Ms. Ann, whereas Council passed a resolution on March 21st, 2021 to become a member of the Decibel Coalition and support its objectives to have Transport Canada Small Vessels Regulation, SOR 2010-91, enhanced by the federal government Transport Canada to include decibel limits on the amount of noise from boat motors and provisions for effective and easy enforcement procedures and whereas Transport Canada has asked for public input through their Let's Talk web portal which offers five potential solutions and whereas council wishes to express its support for option five, uh, introduce performance standards for manufacturers and vessel operators to follow, to be known uh, to the federal government and now therefore be it resolved the council directs staff to submit the letter attached as appendix I to this motion via the submit tab uh, on the Transport Canada Let's Talk web portal. Bottom line is we get to voice our opinion. Anybody, any other comments? All those in favor? And Burke, we are unanimous again. Thank you very much, Councillor Bridgman and Ms. Ann, for bringing that forward. Um, okay. So we do have uh, Mr. Fawner here, I know, for a one o'clock delegation. Um, I wonder if we want to, and what item is that regarding here? I'm sorry, I got to back up on my thing. Do we want to jump ahead to a planning? 9B4. Let's just see here. 
you know, I really don't want to get his early or well, not early. I probably should have brought him in a little bit later. Let's uh, leave him out for a second. We'll try and work through a few of the other uh, items. Um, we have do 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 um, some award of contracts. Uh, I'm going to read these, some of these, and just see where we go. Um, 8C would be the first one. Um, and it's a report from our public works technician to participate in the district municipality. And that's high float surface treatment contract moved by Councillor Everett, seconded by Councillor Roberts, be resolved that the township participate in the district's contract for base reclamation and high float surface treatment in the amount of $667,224.50, taxes excluded, and that the Director of Public Works be authorized to execute all necessary documents to proceed with the participation in this contract. Council, any questions regarding this? All those in favor? There's one carried. Thank you very much. We have another one very similar. Moved by Councillor Hayes, seconded by Councillor Nishikawa, be it resolved that Township Council authorized the Township participation in the district contract for the supply and application in, of emulsified asphalt slurry seal type two in the amount of $135,473, tax excluded, and the Director of Public Works be authorized to execute the necessary documents to proceed with participation in the contract. All those in favor? Carried. We have some slurry, slurry seal. Uh, moved by Councilor Jaguar, second by Councilor Mazan. Be it resolved that Township Council authorize the Township participation in the district contract for hot mix asphalt and minor surface uh, reconstruction in the amount of $394,009.10, taxes excluded, and that the Director of Public Works be authorized to execute the necessary documents to proceed with participation in the contract. Any comments on the hot mix? All those in favor? Hot mix be carried. Um, okay, some uh, more contracts moved by Councilor Kelly, second by Councilor Bridgman, be it resolved that item one, Granular A, Bear Clave Road, uh, and contract T, 2022-34, be awarded to Weeks Construction for the bid price of $107,066, tax excluded, and that item two, Granular A, for Seguin Place, a contract T, 2022-34 be awarded to Weeks Construction for the bid price of $16,758. Taxes excluded. And the items three and four, granular A and granular B, type two, on Evely Road, contract 2022-34 be awarded to 1050-1715 Ontario Inc. Alan Brown Trucking, I believe, not tricking. There's that for the bid price of $149,917.92, taxes excluded, and that the Director of Public Works be authorized to execute the necessary documents to proceed with the contract. Uh, and just a quick question, these are all under contract 2022-34, even though they're different projects and different roads. I'm just noticing that right now. And maybe I'll just correct that, confirm with the Director of Public Works. Mr. Becking, should these all be contract T2234? That is correct, Your Worship. <clears throat> there are separate items in the in the contract, and the bidders were eligible to bid on some, none, or all of the items. Understood. Thank you for that. Any comments on this award of contract? All those in favor? That one is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, moved by Councillor Zavitt, second by Councillor Everett to be resolved that Council award contract T2022 number four to Miller Paving Limited for the bid price of $100,140 plus HST and that the Director of Public Works be authorized to execute the necessary documents to proceed with this contract. Um, I'm gonna ask the Director awarding a contract to Miller Paving, what's it regarding specifically? What road or just a general paving contract? It's for the application of uh, calcium chloride dust as presence to all gravel roads in the township. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? All those in favor? It is carried. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councilor Nishikawa, second by Councilor Jagowitz. Be it resolved that contract T2231, 20. 2231 be awarded to Northgate Power Equipment in the amount of $34,644, taxes 
and duty excluded, and that the uh, fire chief be authorized to purchase a trailer in the amount of uh, $4,800 taxes and duty excluded, and the fire chief be authorized to execute the necessary documents with respect, with respect or with these purchases. Uh, any questions on purchasing a new trailer and or the other uh, North Cape Power? Not seeing any, all those in favor? There we go. Thank you. Uh, looks like we're going to buy a couple of uh, pickup trucks. Moved by Councillor Mazan, seconded by Councillor Kelly. Be resolved that contract T2022-29 be awarded to Bourgeois Ford North in the amount of $149,011.68 taxes excluded, and that the fire chief be authorized to execute the necessary documents to proceed with the purchase. Any questions on this particular purchase? All those in favor? That one is carried. Uh, fire apparatus, moved by Councillor Bridgman, seconded by Councillor Edwards, be it resolved that contract T2230 be awarded to Midwest Fire Apparatus in Laverne, Minnesota, in the amount of $293,468 US, taxes and duty excluded, and the fire chief be authorized or arranged to have a vehicle brought into Canada for import and delivery fees of $17,000, and that fire chief be authorized to execute the necessary documents to proceed with the purchase immediately to take advantage of the dollar exchange rate. Councillor Nishikawa, new fire truck question. Thank you. Um, I, I guess I'm going back to our old discussions that in fact, we were not going to be purchasing in the States. We were going to try to purchase in Canada and that therefore we wouldn't be involved in this US dollar difference and all of that. Um, and mostly buying Canadian. Okay, thank you. Chief Morale, do you wanna comment on the purchase of the fire truck? Um, I, sorry, I, I, I have to apologize through you to council. I wasn't aware that we were not in the, in the business of purchasing goods out of the United States. I can tell you as it relates to this tender, we tendered the specification that we required and there was only the one bidder that came from the United States. Okay. So we have our U S option. Director Becking, you want to comment? If I could uh, be of assistance, Your Worship, under the Canada-U.S. Free Trade Agreement, we are not uh, at liberty to exclude U.S. bidders if they choose to. Okay. May I ask if staff are aware of the old policies that we had put in place? Um, I'll go to Director Becking or maybe our CAO or maybe our Treasurer. Um, or director of finance to provide us with any policies on a purchase contract. I see Mr. Donaldson's turned on his camera. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I've reviewed the procurement bylaw um, and there's nothing in there that precludes any purchase from the U.S. and I'm not aware of any policies that existed prior to that. Um, and we have been following the procurement bylaw uh, as it's currently written. Okay, regarding purchase of a fire truck, any other comments? We've all heard the resolution, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? That is carried, thank you. Okay, um, not sure if Ms. Lehman wanted to comment on the next resolution, that's regarding council remuneration. Uh, just to remind uh, council, we had a policy that said we would be a a year and a half out of any election to do a review of uh, council remuneration. We decided a month ago to allow staff to do and bring back some information that uh, is before us today. Ms. Lehman, did you want to comment? Because I think there's uh, one salary increase in contemplated in this. Sarah? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I had a I, I, I'm just available for questions if anyone has any. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go to our clerk. I should read that. Uh, uh, Director of Legislative Services. Lauren, I'll go with you. No problem. Thank you. So uh, thank you, Your Worship, for the comments about the background of how we uh, had this report ended up in before you. So as everyone remembers, at the last General Finance Committee on March 16th, committee directed staff to prepare the council remuneration review using internal resources. 
And uh, thank you to Ms. Lehman for assistance with that, uh, using internal resources to get this before you for this April council meeting. Based on the comparators, uh, the comparator review staff are making re these recommendations for council to approve the inclusion in the 2023 budget and the implementation in the next term of council. Amendments have not been brought forward uh, to the council compensation policy as it currently exists on staff's understanding that this is a one-time deviation from the policy and that in general, members of council would prefer to keep that policy in place, which uh, indicates that an ad hoc citizens committee will be st struck in the new term of council. But if this uh, would like to be revisited, uh, council can direct otherwise. Um, if staff, if uh, council decides that any deviation from a traditional comparator approach uh, is necessary, it is likely to be best explored with a compensation specialist at a future time. These comparators were selected in line with the market comparator group, the same market comparator group uh, used with non-union staff. And so the, the 60th percentile of the market was used and the comparison showed that the deputy mayor position was actually below the 60th percentile. So the recommendation would be to increase this role by 6.6%. So uh, happy to take your questions on that. Okay, thank you. I hope I didn't actually give any feedback there because I realized my microphone was on. I apologize, Council. Um, I thought I hit mute, but I hit my speaker mute. Councillor Hayes. Um, thank you, and through you. The one thing that that wasn't in the report was um, the average hours that Council takes. I know that a lot of the areas start at 7, finish at 9. Uh, we start at 9 and sometimes finish at 7. So... I, I would like to see that incorporated into any future um, any future reports that we have to give a better idea of just how much we are invested in our meetings. That's a great idea. And I think uh, following uh, uh, the concept that uh, we would remain with our current policy that a year and a half prior to the next term of council, we do that review. And I think that can be taken care of just in the minutes perspective that we would add that in at that time. Uh, any other comments, Councilor Mazan? Uh, thank you and through you. And just a, a quick comment for future, if available and possible to include in our comparator groups, um, seasonal population. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask the question because I'm not sure uh, what you mean by include or comparator sorry. groups. Sorry, yeah, it, if I could, I should have heard there in appendix one when they provided the uh, the different comparator data on council size, which I found this uh, to be quite an intriguing um, table. Uh, the population, as it looks to be here, is simply the year round, and I think to be truly reflective of our township, it, having another column that might include our full population would be, uh, would be helpful. That's just for future. Certainly understand uh, that concept because we certainly represent more than 6,500 people. Well, and if you look at that, uh, sorry, sorry, supplemental, if, I, if looking at that, uh, that table, I found that to be quite intriguing if you look at the number of full-time funded positions based upon population, and I think it dovetails into what Councillor Hayes was picking up on, which is not only the number of hours, but the actual sheer um, responsibility uh, of our role. And I've, I've heard other members of council touch upon that before. So, you know, just for future part of this whole compensation, understanding job description, understanding and review, um, I think these other considerations should be included. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hayes, you had a second question. Uh, thank you. And through you, uh, Councillor Mazan tweaked something that I think is very important, and that is we really shouldn't be relying on population, whether it's seasonal or permanent. What we should be looking at is the number of tax bills, because that indicates the number of taxable properties. We don't care if there's one person living on them or 10 people living on one property. It's the property itself that uh, we have to take care of. And um, it might be a good comparator to see that, you know, we actually have the majority of the tax bills that 
are produced in the lower tier areas. Okay, Councillor Everts. Uh, yes, uh, thank you to the mayor. Uh, I noticed our uh, population's wrong too, because it's 7,652 with the new uh, census that came out and that, and, uh, and that also uh, when we do a planning committee, how many applications are uh, there in, in planning here compared to the other, other uh, municipalities? I think we're one of the busiest uh, uh, municipalities in the uh, district. So it, it just, let's, let's try and compare apples to apples. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kelly. Uh, thank you to you, and real quick, just this. I, I don't, I, I agree comparing apples to apples is important, but there's no apples that are like these apples. Uh, and, and, and I don't think doing comps is anywhere nearly as, re near as relevant as having some committee. Uh, I think there were several suggestions, uh, outside consultants, which I don't particularly uh, think is the right approach, um, or a citizens committee, but somebody take a look at the job and what this job entails and, and value it according to the time and the effort and the skill that goes into doing it well. Um, uh, I, 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 comparing to another place makes sense if there's a threat that any of us would decide to pack our bags and leave for that place and run there, and we can't. So, uh, you know, comps is a great idea if you're worried about losing your employees to the competition. Other than that, it's maybe interesting, but I think the real way of determining the right price is to do a, a bit of a, a dive into the elements of the job and make sure that there's an appropriate level of compensation for time, effort, and skill. I agree with uh, everybody's comments up to this point. And I think uh, we do know that based on our council composition policy, and again, a year and a half prior to any election, um, we will have the ability to do that and to do a deeper dive. The purpose in the exercise was today was to at least set and make sure we were somewhat in the ballpark uh, of the next term of council. Otherwise it would be another five years before that could be adjusted. So um, this is just moving forward and, and based on the resolution, the only uh, change in salary would be that of the deputy mayor. Oh, who wants to speak right now? Councillor Edwards. Thank you very much. Um, I think the uh, public should, should be made uh, aware of, of how much time they have uh, uh, actually invested in this because I, I seen a, a, a uh, association put out that uh, looking for candidates only part time. And that so uh, I think if anybody runs on that, they may get a shock. I think uh, and that some of the new councillors could attest to that. Thank you. Certainly a good point. Okay, so I have a resolution here moved by Councillor Hayes, second by Councillor Jagowitz. Be it resolved that the deputy mayor receive an increase in salary of 6.6% .6 as a result of the market comparator review and that the approved increase be included in the 2023 budget with an effective implementation date in the new term of council. Any comments? All those in favor? Carried. Carried. Councillor Edwards. If you choose to be deputy mayor again, you got yourself 6.6%. There we go. Um, we've got some uh, road allowances closing. Uh, I'm just going to read them right now and see if we have any issues. Moved by Councillor Kelly, second by Councillor Mazan. Be it resolved that a portion of township road allowance lying in front of concession 11 lot 27 Monk. Designated as parts one and two on plan 35R 26652 Bissonette, rule 91138, be declared surplus, and that the clerk is hereby instructed to dispose of said property pursuant to sections 8, 9, 11 of the Municipal Act 2001. And further, that bylaw 202237 to stop up, close, and convey a portion of Township Road Allowance, designated as parts one and two on 35R 26652, be given three readings and passed. Any questions or comments on this first road allowance? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, where am I at here? Uh, bylaw, corporate seal, license agreement. Let me jump ahead here. My apologies. Surplus land, Kelly. 
this is a resolution moved by Councilman Shikawa, seconded by Councilor Roberts, be it resolved that bylaw 2022-41, being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and clerk to execute and affix a corporate seal to a license agreement between the corporation and the Township of Muskoka Lakes and Dominic and Julia Barcelli be given three readings. One of our license agreements. Any comments on the license agreement? All those in favor? Clerk, we're carried. Thank you very much. Um, colonization road moved by Councillor Zavitt, seconded by Councillor Bridgman, be it resolved that bylaw 202255 being a bylaw to confirm ownership of the part of the colonization road identified as part of lot 26 concession one watt, designated on part two on plan 35R26442, rule 2504, be read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed. Any cons? Sorry, comments on the colonization road? All those in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much. Um, Skoka compliance audit. Terms of reference. An appropriate bylaw. I'm just trying to get caught up here on my little list to see exactly where we are. Um, Moved by Councillor Edwards, seconded by Councillor Hayes. Be it resolved that bylaw 2022 58 being a bylaw to adopt the Muskoka Compliance Audit Committee terms of reference be read at first, second, and third time, and finally passed. Any comments or questions on this? All those in favor? There we go. Thank you. That one is carried. And I think we're now moving into planning 9A5. It's according to my. Um, thing to do, 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 hold on one second. Done. Apologies. Okay. And Mr. Fauna was here to speak on. Sorry, my apologies again. Anybody? 9B4. Okay. So let's go to 9A5. We'll work our way through here right now. Um, designated site plan control. Do we need any introductions in this right now? Like our planning staff. I think we're just designating a site plan control. I'm going to read this resolution moved by Councillor Jagowitz, second by Councillor Kelly. Be it resolved the following bylaws be read a first, second, third time, finally passed, and that's bylaw 202259 to designate site plan control. Parts of lot 34 and 35 concession one watt. Kirbyson, rule 2701, and bylaw 202260 to designate site plan control. Part of lot 19, concession nine, parts four, five, uh, and part seven and eight on plan 35R15704, Medora, Foss, roll 412.05 and 412.051. And bylaw 2022-65 to designate site plan control kitchen, lot 32, concession two, parts three and seven, plan 35R8492, Cardwell, roll 1348. Any comments on implementing site plan control? All those in favor? That one's carried. Thanks for admin to clean up here today. Um, our tax levy bylaw, I'm just going to read it. Moved by Councilor Mazan, second by Councilor Nishikawa, be it resolved that bylaw 2022 63, being a bylaw to levy and collect taxes for municipal purposes for the year 2022 and to establish due dates for payments and to charge penalties for non payment of the same. Be read a first, second, and third time and finally passed. Any questions? All those in favor? That one is carried. Thank you, Donaldson. We can bill away. Um, appointing a building inspector, moved by Councillor Roberts, seconded by Councillor Zavitz, be it resolved by law 2022-61, being a bylaw to appoint a building inspector for the Enforcement of Building Code Act and building bylaw for the Corporation of the Township of Muskoka Lakes be rated first, second, and third time and finally passed. Any comments? All those in favor? That one is carried. Um, fees uh, moved by Councilor Mazan, seconded by Councilor Bridgman, be it resolved that bylaw 2022-62, being a bylaw to amend Schedule F of our consolidated fees and charges bylaw 2021-122, be read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed. Any comments? All those in favor? There we go. Thank you. Um, Okay, well now we're gonna move into 9B1. 
and Hare and Marsham is our first application. Ms. Walker. Thank you, Your Worship. Good afternoon. In March, Planning Committee heard Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application ZBA 56 slash 21 bylaw 2021 180 in the name of Heron Marchand. The subject properties are known municipally as 1034 and 1036 Kitchener Street. Consent application B slash 131 slash 132 slash 21 ML was submitted concurrent. Bylaw 2021-180 will have the effective rezoning portions of the subject lands. Severed Lot 1 is proposed to be rezoned from Community Residential R1 to Community, Resi com community Commercial Marina C2. Severed Lot 2 is proposed to be rezoned from Community Residential Waterfront R4 to Community Commercial Marina C2. Retained Lot 2 is proposed to be rezoned from Community Residential Waterfront R4 to Community Residential R1. In March, Planning Committee recommended approval of the application to Council. No minor amendments are required. Submissions were received from Nick Snyder, the Township's Chief Building Official, Tim Sopko, the Township's Public Works Technician, Eric Campbell, the Township's Intern Fire Protection Officer, the District Municipality of Muskoka, the Trillium Lakeland School Board, Bell Canada Hydro One, and Laura Robertson, a area property owner. All submissions have been included in the agenda package today. I have no further comments and I'd be happy to assist council with any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. I'm going to do first and second move by Councillor Kelly, second by Councillor Everts, be it resolved that bylaw 2021-180 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014-14. Hare and Marchand, rule 712-52 and 712-53 be read first and second time. First and second reading, all those in favor? Carried. That's carried, thank you. Ms. Walker, I heard there were no minor amendments, so that's correct. Thank you. Um, Council, any comments before I do third reading? Not seeing any. Moved by Councillor Zavitt, seconded by Councillor Kelly. Be resolved that bylaw 2021-180. Hare and Marshall, be read a third time and finally passed. All those in favor? Sure. That one is carried. Thank you. Okay, Dvorkin. Who do we have for this one? Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Your Worship. Good afternoon. Uh, in March, Planning Committee heard a zoning bylaw amendment to ZBA 4921, uh, bylaw 2021-157 in the name of Dvorkin. This subject property is located in the urban center of Bala, where it is connected to municipal water and sewer services. Uh, the purpose and effect of the application is to provide exemptions to permit an accessory secondary dwelling unit on the subject property with exemptions to the minimum front yard setback, the minimum interior side yard setback, and the maximum height for an accessory building. Uh, planning committee has recommended approval without any minor amendments. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna to go to first and second, moved by Councillor Roberts, second by Councillor Mazan, be it resolved that bylaw 2021-157 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014-14. Dvorkin, be it rule 7-12-37. Be read a first and second time. All those in favor? Sure. Thank you very much. No minor amendments, I heard. Uh, prior to third reading, council, any comments? Not seeing any. Moved by Councillor Everett, second by Councillor Zavitz. Be resolved that bylaw 2021 157 Vorkin be read a third time and finally passed. All those in favor? There we go, thank you very much. That one is carried. Over to Newlands. Where are we going there? Ms. Darling. Thank you, Your Worship. In March, Planning Committee heard zoning amendment application ZBA 58 slash 21 bylaw 2021 183 in the name of Newlands. The zoning bylaw amendment application was submitted to demolish an existing two story boathouse, an associated dock, and construct a new two story boathouse and associated dock. A sleeping cabin and a covered area is proposed in the upper level of the two-story boathouse. Planning committee recommended to council that the application be approved. No objections were raised by the township's development services division, the public works department, or the emergency services department. And the community and planning services department of the district municipality of Muskoka were not opposed to the application being approved. No minor amendments are necessary. Staff have no further comments, but would be happy to assist council with any questions. Thanks. Okay, thank you. First and second, moved by Councillor Hayes, seconded by Councillor Roberts, be it resolved that bylaw 
2021-183 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014-14 Newlands rule 5638 be read a first and second time. All those in favor of first and second? Count one is carried. There was no minor amendments being requested. Council, any comments prior to third reading? Not seeing any move by Councillor Kelly, second by Councillor Mazan. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-183 Newlands be read a third time and finally passed. Final questions? All those in favor? Carried. That one is carried. Thank you very much. Next application. Where are we going here? Is there a planner? Ms. Darling. I see the microphone. There we go. Yeah, it's just wasn't clicking. Thank you. I uh, you know Mr. Fauner's with us. Maybe we'll bring him in. Should there be any questions at this particular time? Uh, just I, so we can observe what's going on. Is he not I here? I believe he has a presentation. If Yeah, I, I'm going to hold on the presentation, uh, Mr. Fauner, at this point, if uh, I may. I'll go to Ms. Darling, first of all, for uh, first and second, but just wanted you to make sure you're in the meeting listening. Ms. Darling? <laughs> Thank you, Your Worship. In March, Planning Committee heard zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA 70 slash 21 bylaw 2021 209 in the name of Farncombe. The zoning bylaw amendment application was submitted to construct a two story accessory building containing a garage and an upper level sleeping cabin. Planning Committee recommended to Council that the application be approved and asked for renderings and a floor plan drawings to be provided, and they were provided in the package for Council today. No objections were raised by the Township's Development Services Division or the Emergency Services Division. Um, no, and no comments have been received since Planning Committee last month. No minor amendments are necessary. Staff have no further comments at this time and be happy to assist with any questions. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Jagowitz, you have a question. Yes, I do, Chair. I see it uh, in our package. Uh, there's a comment from Public Works about a road setback, and it says uh, it says where this is the case, and as such, this application is not supported by Public Works. I just wondered if how that was resolved, or was it, Ms. Darling? Did you want to comment on that? We did have that discussion at Council or at uh, Planning Committee, and. Uh, we realized, I think, that the current travel portion. Oh, Mr. Sharp, you want to comment? Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, that discussion was had at planning committee, and committee opted to move the forward the, the application forward uh, in spite of uh, the comments from the Public Works Department. Thank you. So, so thank you. So, I was just correcting the record that there was that, and then I have a an additional comment, but I'll wait till Mr. Foner speaks, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, I was just going to do first and second reading potentially right then, then do any questions and comments. If we don't need Mr. Connor to speak, not that we don't like hearing you speak, but uh, we might just get your question ahead of that. I'm going to do first and second. Okay, well, well then I, I will raise the question because I would like it addressed. Uh, there was a condition, not a condition, but um, as, uh, as the planner indicated, um, um, the proponent was asked to supply uh, floor plans and drawings, and particularly on the garage area. And um, if I can refer to you to two pages of the information that, uh, that was supplied uh, on page 219, you'll see there's a picture which we had before, which shows the glass area on the main floor. But 221, page 221 is in the new documents provided to us. And 221 shows a picture of a garage with a car in it, and then it shows up a three pane sliding glass door out to a deck. And that deck, I believe, is that glassing area. So I just wanted an explanation of what that was and how that kind of fit into the, the garage concept. Okay. I'm going to hold that question. I'll get to Mr. Farner in a second. I'll go to Councillor Bridgman for a question, first of all. Uh, Mayor Hardy and I had exactly the same question because we are questioning whether this is really a garage or more living area with a deck off of it. So I'll be happy to hear Mr. Fawner speak. Okay, I will go to Mr. Fawner at this particular point to try and answer those rendering questions and what's on the first and second floor of the building. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor Harding and uh, through to the uh, councillors, yeah. 
A couple of things. I guess first thing regarding uh, public works, I know uh, Councillor Jaglowitz had brought up that we do have to add to the um, back or away from the lake for the septic bed, and that's why we cannot move the building any farther forward. So that's the reasoning. Uh, and unfortunately, that wasn't clear when I made the submission. <clears throat> In terms of the garage itself, the main floor is to be used as a garage. Uh, in looking at that floor plan, uh, there's access to the upper floor, there's no plumbing, there is storage area. Uh, in terms of the deck, uh, this is a building that has living accommodation above, so it's not entirely a storage building where, of course, you do get suspicious about a deck, but I, I believe anyways that where you have an upper floor sleeping cabin, it's not unusual to have an associated deck. You know, the habitable space is permitted in the building. In terms of the uh, sliding doors, I guess that's just, that is part of the design. And I guess a bit of a quirky thing, and I don't know what you do, but uh, my client happens to have a classic Porsche that he happens to like to look at. So uh, I'm not sure, you know, what to do about that, but that is the reality. So uh, of the situation, I guess you could argue it's not really a planning matter. He could park something else in there, but uh, that was what he indicated to me. So uh, I happen to have a soft spot for sports cars. I own one myself. So, uh, but at the same token, that was the explanation given to me. Okay. Councillor Jagowitz, Councillor Bridgman, you're both satisfied. Councillor Jagowitz. Yeah, yeah. Just, just to follow up, and I appreciate the explanation. I'm starting to understand, but and maybe I just don't see it right. The deck, a deck is something that doesn't have a roof, right? So that glassed in area that I'm looking at in the picture on 219, that's actually part of the garage wall, is it? I, it's, very, it's very hard to tell whether that deck is enclosed or not. Do, do you understand what I mean? That, that piece of the lower floor protrudes out because there's a flat roof above it. And then there's glass and then there's the deck. Just, I'm just, am I just looking at it wrong? Or? Mr. Foner, did you want to comment on the elevation we're looking at? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, um, through the mayor, uh, yeah, the deck is not enclosed. It is an open deck. So it's the it's the garage wall that protrudes out uh, farther than the upper building and has a flat roof and has the glass sliding doors in. So the garage kind of sticks out. Is that correct? It does. That, that's correct. The, um, the lower floor is 690 square feet and the upper floor of the sleeping cabin is 630 square feet. I, so I yes, see. The, the lower floor is slightly larger, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to go to first and second reading, moved by Councillor Zabbitt, second by Councillor Bridgman, be it resolved that bylaw 2021-209 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014-14, Farncombe, rule 417 Eight, be read at first and second time. All those in favor? Yeah. That one is carried. Uh, I believe I heard no minor amendments. Just to confirm, Ms. Darling. That's correct, no minor amendments. Uh, Council, any other comments, questions prior to third reading? Mr. Foner, did you need to say something or are you okay? You're good, thank you. Uh, I'm good as Council long as you're good. I, I think if I'm reading the room, I think we're gonna be okay. Moved by Councilman Shikawa, second by Councilor Hayes. Be resolved that bylaw 2021-209, Farncombe. Be read a third time and finally passed. All those in favor? That's carried. Mr. Thank Foner. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you very much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Okay. Final uh, next application, I believe, is kitchen. If I'm not mistaken. There we go. Who have we got? Ms. Walker. Thank you, Your Worship. In March, Planning Committee heard zoning bylaw amendment ZBA 71 21 bylaw 2021 210 in the name of kitchen. The subject property is known municipally as 1220 Rosso Lake Road 3, Unit 4. Bylaw 2021-210 will have the effect of repealing sections two and three of bylaw 1989-167, which permitted a sleeping cabin to be 775 square feet in size and to be set back 20 feet from the front lot line. It will also permit a sleeping cabin to have a floor area of 829 square feet and permit that sleeping cabin to be 13 feet from the high water mark. In December, Planning Committee recommended approval of the application to Council and no minor amendments are required. 
Submissions were received from Nick Snyder, the township's chief building official, Tim Sopko, the township's public works technician, Eric Campbell, the township's interim fire, fire protection officer, the district municipality of Muskoka, the Trillium Lakelands District School Board, and a letter of support was received from David and Kathy K Kitchen, neighboring property owners. All submissions have been included in the agenda package today. I have no further comments, but I'm happy to assist council with any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. First and second reading moved by Councilor Ms. Ann, seconded by Councilor Jagowitz, be it resolved that bylaw 2021 210 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014 14 kitchen rule 1318 be read a first and second time. All those in favor of first and second? That one's carried. Thank you. There was no minor amendments. I did not hear any required. Uh, any final comments from or questions from Council prior to third reading? I'm not seeing any move by Councillor Jagua, second by Councillor Everett to be resolved that bylaw 2021 210 kitchen be read a third time. And finally, passed. All those in favor? Carried. That one is carried. Thank you. Okay, Myers. Who's up? For planning staff, Ms. Darling. Thank you, Your Worship. In March, Planning Committee heard zoning bylaw amendment applications at BA 57 slash 21 bylaw 2021-181 in the name of Myers. The zoning bylaw amendment application was to is to repeal section one double I of bylaw 1999-162, which requires a front yard setback of 100 feet. This will permit buildings and structures to be con constructed within the required site front yard setback stipulated by the township's comprehensive zoning bylaw. Comments were received from the Public Works Department, Building Department, the Community and Planning Services Department, and the District Municipality of Muskoka. The three letters of there were three letters of support from area neighbors, Alan McLaughlin, David Ditchburn, Neil, and Catherine Ann Beachy Carroll. All comments were received prior to planning committee and no comments have been received since. There are no minor amendments necessary. Staff have no further comments at this time and be happy to assist council with any questions. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna to go to first and second, moved by Councillor Hayes, second by Councillor Zavis. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-181 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw 2014-14 mayors, rule 1367-2, be read a first and second time. All those in favor? Okay, first and second, thank you. I heard no minor amendments. And prior to third reading, council, anybody want to chime in? We're good for third. Looks like moved by Councilor Nishikawa, seconded by Councilor Kelly, be it resolved that bylaw 2021 181 mayors be read a third time and finally passed. All those in favor? That one is carried as well. I think the final planning application of the day, Walker's Point Holdings. Caitlin, over to you again, Ms. Darling. Thank you, Your Worship. This application was deferred at the October 14th, 2021 Planning Committee meeting and changes were made and the application returned to Planning Committee in March. Planning Committee heard zoning bylaw amendment application ZBA 29 slash 21 bylaw 2021-096 in the name of 1823 Walkers Point Holdings. The zoning bylaw amendment application was originally submitted to recognize an as-built boathouse within a side yard setback and, and greater than 10 feet on land. The application was amended and rec to recognize an as-built boathouse greater than 10 feet on land prior to returning to planning committee in March. Planning committee recommended to council that the application be approved. Comments were received from the Public Works Department, Building Department, the Community and Planning Services Department of the District Municipality of Muskoka, Trillium Lakelands District School Board, and three letters of concern from area neighbors, Neil Murphy, Sheldon and Rose Gold, and Susan Murphy. All the comments were, were received prior to the planning committee meeting in October, and no comments have been received since the development was amended prior to planning committee last month. The first, there are two minor amendments necessary. The first minor amendment is to reflect the revised development proposal. And the second is to prohibit the future construction of a gazebo, sauna and pump house in the front yard area. Staff have no further comments and would be happy to assist with council with any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna do first and second move by Councillor Bridgman, second by Councillor Zavitz, be it resolved that bylaw 2021-96 to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw. 
2014, 14, 18, 23, Walker's Point Holdings, Inc., Rule 8391-2, be read a first and second time. All those in favor? That looks like it's carried, thank you. We do have a minor amendment, as Ms. Starling suggested, and that would be to update Schedule 2 of the bylaw, and then also the second portion of that is to prohibit future construction of a gazebo sauna or pump house in the front yard. Uh, any other comments on the minor amendment from council perspective? Moved by Councillor Edwards, seconded by Councillor Roberts. Be it resolved that Township Council amend bylaw 2021-96-1823 Walker's Point Holdings Limit, Inc. Uh, and these amendments are minor in nature and do not require further public circulation or are hereby approved prior to third reading. These amendments shall consist of updating Schedule 2 to bylaw 2021-96 to reflect the revised site plan. And number two, prohibiting the future construction of a gazebo, sauna, and uh, pump house in the front yard area. Any comments on the minor amendment? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Third, third and final move by Councillor Hayes, seconded by Councillor Nishikawa. Be it resolved that bylaw 2021-96-1823, Walker's Point Holdings, Inc. Be read a third time and finally passed. Council, any comments prior to third reading? Not seeing any. All those in favor? That one's carried. Thank you. There we go. Uh, I have a next resolution, and that is moved by Councillor Jaglitz, second by Councillor Mazan. Be it resolved that Council in closed session convene at 2.01 p.m. for litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, and that's 2.00 OLT matters, and if required, personnel matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal, local board employees, committee appointments, one matter, pursuant to Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001, pursuant to Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001. I think I just repeated myself. All those in favor? Sure. That is carried. Uh, for those watching, thank you. Um, for council perspective, why don't we uh, just take ourselves a quick 